Good afternoon. I hope this message finds you well. I have redrafted the trust of your Russian clients. The LLP is effectively uh, C-suite. Can you kindly make sure that this goes as quickly as possible? Hey, this is confidential. They would take their Bermuda company and re-domesticate and the driver's tax reason. Bye. There was Panama Papers, but then we soon realized this is something big again. It's a leak of two offshore providers, Applebee and Asia City, and then it's a leak of several company registries of tax havens. The documents speak for themselves. They expose the offshore deals of more than 120 politicians and world leaders, from the Queen of England's investment in a company accused of preying on poor families to U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. I intend to be quite scrupulous about recusal in any topic where there's the slightest scintilla of doubt. The investigation reveals that Navigator, a shipping firm in which Ross holds a stake, has been making millions of dollars from its business with Seabor, an energy company co-owned by the son-in-law of Russian President Vladimir Putin and two Russian oligarchs. We're seeing some of the biggest corporations in the world, you know, Apple. We don't depend on tax gimmicks. A year after that hearing, Apple responded to new laws on tax avoidance with a new strategy that allows it to keep paying ultra-low tax rates. We're seeing the lengths that companies do go to avoid taxes. If for Nike it's the swoosh, for Facebook it's user base. US companies, they've taken this commercially smart move to park their intellectual property in offshore or stateless entities. It tells you just how systemic over decades has been the process of establishing and using companies in secrecy jurisdictions, but the secrecy that allows you to evade or avoid the regulations or the taxation in other jurisdictions. Glencore has again come under fire for its aggressive dodging of paying tax. New details emerge on Glencore, one of the world's largest commodity traders. This is a group of 154,000 employees and contractors around the world. Files reveal that the company has fought off lawsuits and tax bills and has diverted millions of dollars through tax havens. This is a mainstream part of the global economy. In Canada, the investigation reveals the offshore deals of the ruling Liberal Party's key insiders. How will you measure <laughs> success? Uh, by the money coming in the till. It's pretty easy. While Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was campaigning on tax fairness... Well, across the country, people have told me that we need better. Documents show that his chief fundraiser was tied to a trust that kept millions of dollars in the Cayman Islands. In Mexico, the files reveal new details on the Legionnaires of Christ, a religious order founded by a Catholic priest who is also a sex offender. Martial, Martial. The documents lead to the organization's offshore companies, with representatives in Rome, near the Vatican. In Europe, the ultra-rich have been exploiting the Isle of Man's lax rules to register multi-million dollar jets. They need to touch down on the island only for a couple of hours to avoid consumption taxes for good. In Africa, Mauritius is an island once known for its sugarcane production. It is now a center for companies eager to profit from Africa's resources while paying as little as possible in taxes to the developing countries. In Asia, the files lead to the offshore holdings of Indonesian dictator Suharto's family, including his son Tommy, who was once convicted of corruption. We're seeing into about one-fifth of the most secret jurisdictions in the world, and the kinds of patterns that we saw with the Panama Papers are now being repeated. In trying to bring to the light that type of secrecy, that's what we need. Good morning, ma'am. We're with the International Consortium for Investigative Journalists. 